So when I was young, um, my parents would give me rules. And no surprise to anyone, uh, a lot of times I wouldn't follow them. Um, I've just always been kind of a little bit of a natural rule breaker. Uh, always been one of those that if there's a rule, I will question it. It just kind of is that. It's not always becoming, I will say that. Um, and for the most part, I'm a pretty good kid and have been a pretty good kid. But there are some rules I kind of like to push and I like to bend and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think a lot of times for me, at least this is how I see it, when I see a rule, I'm thinking about, but why does that exist and couldn't something better exist? And I don't know that that rule actually gets to the end of what it's trying to get to. And so here's something I'm going to say. Rules promise more than they give. Um, a lot of times you're like, well, if I follow that rule, then I, it's going to get me to a certain point. But that's not always the truth. As a matter of fact, when I'm putting together things or I have a recipe or, or whatnot, and my wife, Sarah, she's like, oh, uh, you need to follow this. You need to follow this. You need to do it like the instructions say or whatnot. And there's so many times that we've been doing that. And I'll follow what the instructions say. But because mass manufactured things don't always have everything right in order, right in line, a lot of times I'll say, oh, we need to bend it this way or bend it that way. But that's not what the instructions say. But I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't get you the end result. Or uh, in a recipe, there's times where I'll follow the recipe and it's made too little or it's made too much. And I'm like, see, sometimes you just have to kind of go with your gut. And so today in a story, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about freedom. And we're going to talk about um, this idea of Christ has set us free and we are no longer to give ourselves over to the bond of slavery. We're going to be in Galatians 5, just one verse to get today, Galatians 5, 1. But I want to give you a little bit of a background. I want to give you a, a couple more scriptures to kind of talk about uh, in your harvest homes and kind of give us a little bit of a context here. So the Apostle Paul writes Galatians. Um, he wrote these words in a letter where he was trying to turn the Galatian church away from its falls into legalism. Okay, so legalism is when you try to become righteous before God by obeying a set of rules perfectly rather than moving and stepping into faith in Jesus. Um, and so there were people in the Galatian church, uh, mainly the Judaizers, who promised a superior spiritual status for obeying the Mosaic law or a, a bunch of rules. Um, there's a couple of other things that the Apostle Paul writes about this and something that Jesus says about this as well. And so Galatians 2, 20 through 23, Paul writes this, if Christ, you died to the element, elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Verse 21, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism, and severity to the body, but they are of no value of stopping the indulgence of the flesh. So here's what Paul's getting to. He's saying, listen, there are some things and people say, well, do not do this and do not touch and do not eat and do not do this because those have the appearance of making someone clean. But in fact, it has nothing to do with the flesh, meaning one of the temptations that we have in life is to gratify the flesh, to get what the flesh wants, when it wants, how it wants. And so for us, the Apostle Paul is saying, but there's something deeper. There's something more going on here. And on the appearance, on the outside, it might seem like you've got it all together. But actually, on the, internally, there's still a war, a spiritual battle wait, raging there. And there, those things, those rules, those things that you're trying to abide by are not going to do anything to that because you've got to deal with the heart, with the spiritual things. Right? Jesus says something uh, similar, Matthew 23, 27 through 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which you look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones and of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And so Paul and Jesus are both talking about this idea of this outward appearance giving off an impression, but that the real emphasis has to be on the internal, the heart, and that these things that make us appear to be righteous on the outside oftentimes don't do anything on the heart. Matter of fact, Jesus says this in Matthew 15. He says, um, it's not what you put into your body 
that makes someone unclean. Because whatever you put into your body goes into the stomach and then out of the body. But out of the mouth is what reveals the heart. And out of the mouth and out of the heart come greed and adultery and envy and anger and wrath. And all of these things are the things that make us unclean. And so today, what I really want to focus on is this, is that there is one way and there is one person and there is just one kind of... uh, not necessarily a theological term, but it's used theologically, that will set us free from all of that slavery and all of that bondage. And it actually has nothing to do with anything on the outside at all. In fact, the rules of man lead to bondage, but the grace of Christ can lead us to freedom. And that's what Galatians 5.1 says. Paul says this, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The rules of man lead us to bondage, but the grace of Christ sets us free. And that scripture is very important to us at Harvest because it's about one of our core values, which we are for freedom. We want people to be set free from sin and death. We want people to walk in freedom. One of the things I I love to to say uh, about Jesus is this, is that when we follow Jesus, He leads us away from other things. And so when we talk about for freedom, what we're talking about is the emphasis of Galatians 5.1. And what that means is that when we talk about one of our core values is this, is we uphold that Jesus sets us free. Jesus is the only one who sets us free. Paul says it, for freedom Christ has set us free. Not your works, not a law, not the, a man, not anything of our own doing, but it is Christ himself who sets us free. Christ broke the bondage of sin and death. The basis for all freedom is found in that kind of theological word or that word that's not a theological word that's used for theology, and that is grace. And grace is a free gift that Jesus gives through His death, His burial, and His resurrection that all who believe in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the good news. That's the gospel. Jesus provided a way that we may have eternal salvation, the power to live the Christian life and to be present in the presence of God eternally. And here's what we believe in that. Scripture tells us that there's nobody that can pluck us out of Jesus' hand. So what we believe is that once saved, always saved. That there's a difference between justification and sanctification. You can be justified, it's a big word, you can be justified to God through Jesus Christ, but you may choose a life to not be completely sanctified, meaning made in the image of Christ as you live your life. Because that's what we believe, is that as once we are justified and we accept Jesus, that then the discipleship process continues in the sanctification process. The idea that we're growing more and more and more like Jesus every single day that we live, the older that we get. And so, Um, God provided these things by Himself. We didn't do anything to earn them. This is the gift of God through Jesus Christ for us. And we cannot add anything to get them. And we cannot do anything to lose them once we get them. And so, the rules of man lead to bondage, but the grace of Christ leads us to freedom. And we at Harvest Church are for freedom. Another phrase that you'll hear us use that tells us why we're for freedom is this. We believe walking in freedom compels us to lead others to freedom. That when we find freedom in Jesus Christ, we then have a responsibility to walk with each other, to lead other people in that freedom. We have to model this and also teach this. We walk alongside people in the process And it's a mutual understanding or a mutual partnership in this with one another. So we have the vertical freedom relationship that happens through Christ. But then we have the responsibility of the horizontal relationship by loving one another and leading each other into freedom and allowing the freedom that we have in Christ 
to help us walk with other people in freedom as well. Because the rules of man lead to bondage, the grace of Christ leads us to freedom. So I want to talk about a couple of uh, things. The first is this, freedom through forgiveness. Freedom through forgiveness. We are free to forgive because Christ forgave us. As a matter of fact, not only did Christ forgive us, but on the cross, Jesus is hanging on the cross, and He says to His Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I had a pastor who's about 73 years old tell me this a few weeks ago. He said, Joshua, we don't forgive for the sake of other people. We forgive because it releases us from that. And it allows us to walk in freedom as we begin to forgive over and over and over and over again. When we forgive, we're able to drop and we're able to move on. And here's the great part. We're able to model the forgiveness of Christ to others. Uh, Just yesterday, so when I'm filming this video, just yesterday, um, I got a message on Facebook from a lady that I knew about 20 years ago. She was attending um, First Baptist Church of Cliftondale, where I was the youth pastor. We had this amazing growth from three kids to nine kids. It was amazing. And we took so many people, uh, kids to Six Flags. We took like 40 kids to Six Flags. It was, it was awesome. But I, I had painted the youth room red, um, and we had played some wiffle ball in the worship center, um, and we had done some other kind of crazy things in the church. Um, and so she had said some really ugly things to me. She had said some really nasty things to me, and she and her husband were not really nice to me whatsoever. Well, just yesterday, I saw her name pop up on Facebook. I haven't talked to her in over 20 years. And as she was saying to me, she was saying, Hey, I've been following you through the post of other people and your pursuit of Christ, and I'm so proud of you. And I want to let you know that I was really mean to you when you were at FBC Cliftondale, and it has sat with me for all these years. Would you forgive me? And of course, I'm like, Sure, of course, we'll forgive you. I remember that, but not a big deal. Forgive you. How are you doing? You know, we can choose to hold on to things, but we can also choose to forgive others, right? We are free because of Christ. We don't have to hang on to the bondage. We don't have to hang on to the chains. We don't have to hang on to the past. We are free because Christ has set us free. And not only do we have freedom through forgiveness, but we have freedom in worship. One of of the things I love in Scripture is King David. And uh, he's being chastised for dancing around as the king and worshiping the Lord. And he says, I will become even more undignified than this. Meaning, I'm free to worship. We are free to worship freely. If we want to hold our hands up, we can hold our hands up. If we want to sing loud to the Lord, we can sing loud to the Lord. And we get the chance to model and to rejoice and be excited for what Christ has done in our heart and in our life in front of people in corporate worship. But also one of our core values is this, is that worship isn't a style, it's a decision. And we believe that worship isn't about a style of music, whether you sing a hymn, a praise song, whether it's loud, whether it's low, whether it's a cappella, whether it's with a choir. Who cares, really? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares what language it's in? But worship really is a decision. It's a decision that we make and that we say we're going to get outside of our circumstances. We're going to get outside of that and we're going to choose to worship God for who He is. And so that freedom comes as we model worship for other people. We decide to worship with our heart, with our mind, with our body. We decide and get up and make, no, I'm going to make a decision in this place. I'm going to make a decision in this pit. I'm going to make a decision in this hurt. I'm going to make a decision in this uncertainty. I am going to make a decision with or without. I'm going to make a decision to worship, and there's a freedom to do that. Our core values being for freedom, meaning that we uphold that Jesus sets us free and that we, we believe walking in freedom compels us to lead others to freedom because here's the thing, the rules of man lead to bondage, but the grace of Christ leads to freedom. There's nothing you're ever going to do. There's nothing you're ever going to do good enough to earn your way into heaven. 
The only way to do that is by believing in Jesus. Because as Paul says, it's by, for freedom's sake, Christ has set us free by the grace of God poured out through Jesus and His death, burial, and resurrection. And so, if you would like to learn more about that in your Harvest Home, we'd love for you to talk to your Harvest Home leaders about that. But we want to be a church that's for freedom. We want to be a church that believes Jesus set us free. And we want to be a church that walks in freedom with one another. And we are free to choose to worship. And we're free to forgive. And we do not have to hold on to all that slavery and all that bondage and all those chains.